It says, tempestuous summertime. The shepherd is right to be afraid. The sky flashes and the thunder is awesome. Grains and fruit are destroyed by the storm. So a couple of things to check. A, that your string crossing is on point and that your level crossings are on point. B, that you are reading the accidentals correctly against the key signature because there are two flats looking in the key signature and then there are a pack of accidentals in here because Vivaldi and see that your shifting is on point because you're going to need some high squeaky bits when you hit the second page of this and definitely get rid of those slurs you don't need to learn this with the slurs the best thing you can do is take the bone out and practice with short staccato strokes to make sure your intonation is right before you start the string crossing and those really smooth slurs that are going to again need you to rock smoothly over the string and that's really related to Bach string crossings back in Bach double we've already done this stuff and you're going to do it again in Bach, book seven in the Bach A minor concerto so everything as always is interlinked and if you do a bit of a search and destroy you can work out that you already know 90% of the technical work in this piece and then it's just a matter of applying the technique to a new melody. So let's take a look at the most popular spot that starts to point out weaknesses. When we get the descending scale in the third line, the first descent, let's play that again. One, two, three, one. Make sure that you accent the rest. Ba 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 ya da 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 da. One two three one. We need to shift up into third position from the E flat. Again, watch out for the doozy accidentals. E flat shift, B flat. strings. Oh, did you hear me stumble on that B flat? I was expecting it to be a B natural from our previous accidentals and I was wrong. So we played in third position. do here I feel is stop and do some navigation between tones and semitones so that you know whether you're setting your fingers or, or whatever you need to work out there so when you have those little ascending scales every time you see a scale pattern stop and pencil in your tones and semitones so you know where to drop your fingers and then if you want to be able to play this fast you need to practice slow we know that, okay? We know that back from playing. Right, slow practice. Oh, we've also done a bit of this back in book four in the A minus first movement playing. Okay, 
They're just ascending scales. So stop, pick up a pencil, get an eraser, hit pause, do the stuff with the tones and the semitones. Give yourself the scaffolding to build this on accurately. I'm going to play again from the D that kicks off the first scale. D da 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 ba 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 and I'm just going to play it slowly because this is all about accurate intonation. You can do the practice and get the tempo up yourself. One, two, three. Rest, set. Rest, set. Rest, set. Rest, set. Rest, set. Rest, set. Rest, shift. Okay, so that's fine because it's just a repeated pattern. Oh, now this next bit looks like it involves a lot of string crossings and you might need to decide where you're gonna play it. Should we play it for instance? Hmm, that doesn't feel very efficient. I'm crossing across three strings. That feels a little bit lousy. Uh, if I go to first position, Two strings, that wins. Much better, much more efficient. So check your B flats in tune. Ringing G natural. Solid tone and ringing D. Back to the B flat. Happy days, we're in B flat major. Excuse my G, that was awful. Again. And we do it three times because Vivaldi, everything that happens three times. Now, I should probably point out here that my string crossing is not ya da 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 I'm leaving my elbow living on the E string and I'm just lifting the back of my hand, taking it to A string. Okay, so it's quite efficient. All the angles. Not da 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 My forearm is doing the work for me and the back of my hand is lifting and I'm trying to keep as many of my hands as possible on the A string. And guess what? Here, leave. Okay, when we were little we used to do this, but now we can be a little bit lazier if we want to. Okay, 25. Getting softer here. In that bar, make sure your ring, ring. So instead of doing this, we want the fourth finger to play. Okay, so tune the fourth finger and make sure that it's bridging the A string correctly. You've already worked on this in the polo double stops, right? So this is a piece of cake, it's not hard. I'm just going to go back to the start of the string crossing section. Da 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 which is a lot like give up for me on amazing. Change fingers. Upper semi turn with the second finger. Elbow, fourth finger, crane it into place. Do it again because we invested so much effort into it. Place the D with a C sharp, second finger sneaks right behind. Down and down. Shift. I am going to fifth position there to set up my infrastructure for the next 
thing. Also because I have a super powerful note on that D and I want bah! instead of oh, I made it. Okay, so the scale, just going back two bars from where I stopped. <laughs> writing your tones and semitones. You will thank me later. Um, and then <laughs> I would advise just sitting down crossing the string. Ooh, high notes. Here again, pick up your pencil, count up those ledger lines and name your top notes so you know what you're actually aiming for. It's also a good idea to work out what position you ought to be in. Just gives you an idea of the geography because you think, okay, third position, yeah. Here's my fifth position. Hmm, there's my seventh. Mm-hmm. I can cheat. I can check that I am playing an E naturally with my first finger by playing it as a harmonic. Because all our fingers can play harmonics, you just lift their weight off the string. And then two, three, four. Oh yeah, I just put the phone. And it is an E natural, there's an accidental in the music. So make sure you've got A, C sharp. There's your destination note. So I practice that by playing one, Three, one, 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 three, one, 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 four. Because then my ears understand what I'm supposed to sound like. One, one, three, three, one, one, four. Or if you're playing it from fifth position, three, three, one, 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 four. You work out what works better for you. I feel the speed is such that it's easier to play it in fifth position and play it from the third finger on the A string. Three, three, cross to the one on the E, slide up to the one on the E, which is your E natural harmonic. Put the four on, and then you're situated for the four, three, D, three, uh, which is where you want to stop, get your pencil out and write your notes in. So that's probably a pretty substantial chunk and you will need your infrastructure for the next section. I'm also looking at those held notes that come up in about 10 bars where you have what looks very much like an open D. Oh wait, that's because it is. Oh, so when you get up to this, this little bit here, where you have these open Ds underneath, your top note is actually being played on the G string. Oh, in a lovely high position, a la shutters, and you're droning with an open D string. So again, your polo comes in super handy because that's just about balancing your bow and two strings. Also, I wouldn't start off playing it like that. I would start off just working out your G string notes in the high position. When you feel like you've got those, get the bow balancing on both strings and play it according appropriately. Once you can do that, you have all of summer set up. All the technique just repeats, but with different sets of notes. So when in doubt, get a pencil, work it out, write it down, get the infrastructure. Take the bowing out, always learn things with short staccato separate bows first. And when you're not sure if your shifting is correct or the pitch is correct, identify the note. Sometimes play it an octave lower so that you can hear, oh, that's the D natural I want. Okay, now go and find the D natural. Okay, now go and find the D natural an octave higher. Uh, because that type of infrastructure is applicable to every piece you all, you ever learn. It's just a tool to keep in your toolbox that helps you take difficult things apart. So I hope that's helpful. Cheers.